This conference will now be recorded. So rule set do a bit of routing our rule set. So as you know rule set, what is a rule set is basically any rule that you create in the system is being tagged to a rule set. <coughs> Just clearing my throat. So, uh, so any rule that you create in the system is, you know, tagged with the rule set. So it is rule set is basically your version. So 01, 01, 01, 01, 02. So all these rules are tagged to the version. And when you when you make a package and you move to production, it'll ask you the, which versions you want to move. So you can mention which versions you want to move, and that is goes to the production. And you can also lock the version. So when you lock the version, now what we did is yesterday we locked the version 01, 01, 01. When you lock the version you know nobody can change it right uh, if you want to change it you have to save the rule in a new version and then then change it and then it goes in the next version and then once you lock it you release to production you lock it because you don't want any changes to the release so every sprint release uh, that you do in your organization basically if it's a month a month release basically a sprint follows you know month uh, month release pattern so you know the month release may not be maybe just a bug fix or maybe you know uh, just a minor release so then you change the versions based on the organization uh, decisions i mean it is not that every sprint release you go and increase the version uh, it always depends on an organization decision whether you want to go for a minor version or a major version uh, in generally also in a year there will be not too many major version releases because if there are major versions then you know um, you know they, you have to follow a lot of uh, procedure so even if there is a suppose there is a major release uh, generally what happens is you push the code in iterations to production uh, you test the, i mean you keep that in production and it's a general availability you know a ga release right they call it a ga release so at one particular point of time you will say you know this is generally available to everyone all the users and then you on the modules in the sense you uh, you, you know you activate that release and then it is available to everybody it's all based on how you really want to release what the customer needs are uh, so that way it works so rule sets basically helps you to tag each rule to a you know version so that is how it goes so what we have to also remember is not everything in pega is a rules rule okay there is something called as data instance also what is a data instance for example you create uh, suppose you create a flow okay uh, or a section or a flow action or you know an activity all these people all these things have versions because you can modify it you want to revert back to the old versions you can revert back but there are some some uh, features in Pega which does not need a version for example your operator ID right does operator ID need a version your operator is an operator in the sense user right the user does not need a version you can hear me what I'm saying. So there are two types of uh, you know, uh, objects in Pega. One is a rule, rule, and one is called as a data instance. You're getting me, guys. So the best example is the operator ID. The operator ID, Dana, I'll show you now. Operator ID need not have a version because the operator is not going to say that I know I want to go to my older version and log in. Right? Doesn't make sense, right? So those kind of things are called as data instances okay and the other rules you know which we see like a flow flow action are all called rules because they have versions they are tagged to a rule set suppose I see suppose I open this in your operator ID so this is the operator ID you will never find a See, you'll never find a you know check in check out feature a version feature is basically tacked to a rule it's tacked to a rule set but it doesn't need not have you know all those kind of uh, even i think this all work group work queue you know this will not have you know this will not have even work basket work queue is a work basket what's a work basket we have exercise for that so this is a basket default basket even that would have this is work basket and work group are basically allocating work in a allocating one case ID to a group and people can take care of it. So this kind of all kind of you know 
these are all kind of data set instances what are they called data instances there are two two points parts to it which you should remember one is <coughs> one is rules and another is data instance right so this is the words these are the words they use so basically these these rules have versions <coughs> they have versions and they don't they don't have versions they don't have check in check or nothing okay so so we saw how to create a rule sorry how to lock a rule set how to enable the check out check in check in feature now let's go do some other setting so now what i will do is this flow suppose i open a flow and suppose i try to run this okay. simple flow Suppose I run, run, run the simple flow, okay? I'll go and run. See, now if you look at this flow, it is still in version 0101, and you see all this disabled because I have locked the locked it. Now, if I want to change it, I have to do a save as. But now I'm going to just run it. So now when I run it, What do you see? C60. Now remember, in, in your organization, there will be multiple applications in Pega. Okay. By default, if there are, suppose there are four applications uh, in Pega in your organization. There are four applications in Pega in your organization. And these four applications, you know, they have flows and everything. And then you create your, whenever you run a flow, it will get an ID. Remember, this ID is, you know, uh, incremented for the, at the Pega level. So that means if you have application one where you created one flow, which will 660 in application two, next you run a flow, it will be 661. So, so this increment is from the Pega side and this increment is done, not, not application wise for all the applications, it will just go on incrementing. So that becomes, you know, a little confusing because suppose you have insurance, suppose you have loans and all these four applications in your system, and then this case goes on incrementing, then you don't understand, you know, this case was for insurance, this case was for loans, you don't understand. So what we're going to do is we're going to configure this case ID. Now, how do we configure? So what you do is there are two things. One is dynamic configuration and one is, you know, static configuration. One second. You can do something else, please. And can clock the door and go. I don't want anybody here one hour. Clock properly and go. Close properly, please. Priti. So yeah, so what I was saying is. So Shiva, just a quick question. So we are configuring uh, these case IDs specific to each of the application that we are working on so that we have something unique for that particular application, am I right? Correct. Okay. Because see, see you understand what I'm saying now. This is, this is my Tesla auto, right? Suppose I had Tesla loans. Okay, suppose I had Tesla solar, other, other company in this pega okay so it will increment there and increment here also you understand what i'm saying yeah, yeah. so you'll never have a so you i mean that is how pega has given you the feature to configure it so it's up to us so we'll configure that so we'll go to your application definition then you should go here so when you see cases and data you can put your you know cases here so you know by by default c60 is coming now so first what you have to do is let's go and work our uh, sorry here first let's go and implement. so work ID perfect so suppose I put Tesla okay Tesla hyphen okay I will say Tesla any name you can give and here our work work layer should come huh? that is Tesla okay 
so whatever now whatever it will come your uh, tesla hyphen will come so whatever this this will come it will come at tesla hyphen okay so this is hard coding this is first we'll be do with hard coding then i'll generate a dynamic one okay also also okay so so two things to remember here first we put this and there's a checkbox here use checkbox to indicate which cases are designed to be created by end users via web or a channel c now i don't know this this i mean this text was different in 7.0 but what does this text tells you tells you is now suppose what is this this is this is kick create kick you can quickly create okay so suppose i go to new do you see anything here no case types defined right so all this which i so when i say case types it's flow right it's either flow because these are the uh, this flow only generates cases c1 c60 right so these flows or i do a case type which i'm not which we are not explored yet so these four if i want to quickly create i don't have to navigate all this way you know and search for it i can actually go and create it from here but now nothing is coming is it not so this checkbox is to enable that so when you check this checkbox then you should come here okay so when i save this let's see so two things i did one is changing this uh, c and as well as putting in a i can do it the same screen right so that's why i'm showing you both now i'll save this done now let's uh, close this close this okay then let's run this and see you see this now in my application everything will start with tesla one tesla two test next i say tesla two right i can actually make it tesla auto that is specific to my tesla auto you get me i can put any name now you got but how can i create for this yeah but this is still hard coding i'll make it more dynamic but let's do, do the other one so if i go here and i go new do you see this all coming so this is kind of a quick create okay so how do you go there go to definitions go to case and data and you need these two things you have to do so make sure that you do that because we would you know a no, lot of followers who are going to create this go to clutter your screen so make sure quick create is enabled for you uh, okay so that is one account now let's suppose i want to make this dynamic okay so what i need to do is uh, there is a there's a chapter on uh, there's a chapter on uh, something called data transfer but uh, just follow what i'm doing in that chapter you'll understand more about what we is that but as of now just follow uh, so go to data transform okay this data transform uh, is nothing but you know we are playing with uh, pages in uh, clipboard and we are copying and we're modifying data so right now don't worry much about it we are going to we are going to have spend almost one hour in data transform but for now i'm um, what is my uh, goal my goal is to now this is hard coded right i want to make it dynamic what do you mean by dynamic so what i'll do is you know i'll put a uh, kind of a date function here so when i put a date function so every day if i have you no know, 100 cases coming in the system it will come it will the work id will be prefixed with the date why that is useful it is useful in any every organization right suppose you want to uh, see a case which is very old and you'll understand when it was created looking at the uh, case id itself you don't have to go and dig in to that moreover it tells you you know if it was like a one year old then you know that what uh, my application was in version you know 010105 and now it is in version of 010205 so i know looking at the even looking at the work id i know you know uh, this case was created one year back and not only one year back it will tell you you know the date the date will help you to do a lot of you know mental calculation saying that this is one year back that during that time i had this issue that is why the case is stuck so it gives you a lot of quick reference as a developer not only as a developer as a you know architect for it to understand what happened at that time and give a reference very quickly which is normal i mean that is something how every organization works but let us do how let us see how you can do in pega so yeah so what i was telling you is go to your flow any flow you can pick it up once you go to any flow go to something called data transform there is something called py default it's setting some value of default just go and click here so you'll see now a lot of things it is setting um, <clears throat> in 7.2 you will see you don't this is survey i think survey they have introduced in 7.4 or 3 uh, in 7.2 i don't you only see this four 
this is something which they have done that is fine we don't have to worry about that uh, so remember <coughs> this what you see here is from pega procom okay <coughs> just a minute <coughs> a lot of cuffs so uh, so this is from whenever you see the result is from pega procom okay so now what you have to make sure that you save as because always remember don't touch the system defined variables when you sort of save as you are actually overriding overriding what is there so just keep it how as it is create it now see the version so now when i when i when i create this it will come to my application so now what i'll do you see this py work id prefix so initially that c hyphen used to come from there then what i did is i over, i you know i said that don't give me c hyphen give me this so it started with this but i will again you know i will say i don't want this i'll say i don't want this okay because i want the dynamic one if you if you put it here it will come there i'll show you that but right now let's see this so now see this was a py default which was pega procom the system defined now i overrode i'm putting a save as and it's come to test lot that is fine so we want what do you want to tamper is the c hyphen so you go and click here sorry so what do here is Hmm. Stuck. So, uh, so what I want is basically, uh, see what I'll do is uh, we'll we'll use our uh, 2000. So you know we'll use this format. We'll use this now 2018. What is today's date? 20, right? So 2018, uh, 11 month and 20, and then probably we can put Tesla Auto, and then put an hyphen. So you have all the case IDs will come like this. Suppose you had one more application, you could have put 2018. Uh, 11 and 20 and then Tesla solar so looking at this you'll understand you know from where the case is coming which applications coming what date it's coming it makes things more easier you can develop anything you want but it's not complex make it very simple you can also put just a uh, you know 11 20 and do it but right now since our application is going to you know many years so we'll do that so we'll again select our function I'll have a, again I'll give to my date function date time function and let's choose something called as current date time so current date time if you look it's a it's a bigger string down so let's go current date again it's showing some time stamp We'll use this. You see this? 2009-0127. We'll use this. So we'll just go and add this. So can current date stamp. God. Again, it's stuck. Get current date stamp. See, I'll put it here only. At the rate, get. so this gives me this is a function, right? This will give me uh, the current date stamp. Then I'll put here Tesla Auto. So in Tesla Auto, I'll put a hyphen here and a hyphen there so that you know that comes there. And then so that should be 
let's suppose we get current and it's time this should be okay let's see if there is an error we'll change it so it is saved then i need to check in okay check it is important let's see if this works so now what i'll do is uh, again i will go so i will again I'll create a new flow <coughs> so i'll go to my flow i'll go here i'll do a refresh so that it takes all the changes in case needed then i'll run the flow you see this 2018 11 20 ta1 so that's how you can configure your dynamic <coughs> so you can use any date functions that are available So you can use any date functions which are available uh, like you know, suppose you just want the month year or suppose you just want the year or you want to use any other prefix which is needed now remember that you know whenever we are doing this where did that go see whenever we are doing this you go to definition case you have to leave this blank suppose i don't leave this blank suppose again i put xyz you know see if i save this now if i create one more flow see now if i create one more flow it won't take you remember it won't take the dynamic one so make sure that your this is blank so that the dynamic okay so that's how you can configure all your cases dynamically and you have to play with something called as py default which comes in data transform what does data transform just you know keep it aside for now but you'll understand how to you know do some default settings and all those things even this work parties when we do we'll check all those makes sense guys let's go to some other topic now any questions before I move to next topic? <clears throat> so three things you have to do. One is you now make sure that new men <clears throat> the new menu comes, the things comes over here. Your uh, versions are set. Your uh, your you know the flow IDs, case IDs are set. So that's you will understand. So when there's one more thing that once you once you now what you do what you see here is just one case ID, right suppose you go create case types which you are going to do at the end so these case types once you create case types you will get all again get populated here because system will automatically populate based on the case type and the child cases that you create so each of your case type will also come with a different prefix and you can customize as needed okay so suppose you had a case type called as you know uh, clay verification and you put cv here all cases will come at cv so you can have multiple as you need so it makes very easy for you to understand which not only in which application what case you're talking about and also the date which it was came it came to your system so it makes very easy to understand refer <coughs> okay <clears throat> so that was part of the setting which we did now you know you will see things flowing in a what our configuration did we did we'll see things going as per that way so last what we saw last time what we saw was obj open now we'll see and another activity called as obj save we'll do a few activities and then we'll go for data page and then we'll see how data page is you know functioning uh, <clears throat> okay so let's see let me tell you what is the case for OBGC. It's quite simple. Okay, so what is what are we going to do? What is OBG save? What is OBG open? Sam, Samir. <coughs> I think these are the methods uh, uh, provided by Pega itself to uh, access the data on objects. Yeah, so these are the methods which are there by inside activity. Remember, activity. what we are talking about is yeah, activity is a rule which is which is derived from OBJ rule OBJ activity. Rule OBJ activity is a class. 
okay so so uh, see suppose i go here suppose i go here okay which which class does flow come flow comes in rule obj flow so if i these are the classes different by pega okay if i open rule obj flow then itself has see everything is like a data model right everything is classes right what are they are defined so if you go to the properties you will see the rule obj flow for flow creating flow we use so many variables right inside that the flow name okay so there are many things which system has defined don't try to tamper this just see what how they you know there'll be more over there so when we said when we uh, created flow action i think it's a rule obj flow action okay so that is so these are the classes from where flow flow action whenever you create a flow or a flow action is derived we are actually you know uh, extending these classes and making our own objects right making our own rules so likewise activity is coming from rule obj this sometimes this gets stuck huh? sometimes doesn't respond yeah so rule so rule obj activity is another <coughs> rule obj activity is Rule of which activity is another class, you know, which uh, where activities are defined. So what about sections? It is rule HTML section. <clears throat> this is the class where sections are created. Okay. So rule HTML section. I think I have to close this browser. 7.2 is much uh, stable than. So only this goes, you know, weird. So what I was saying is rule HTML. If you put HTML, then you will see all the section properties which you are creating. Paragraph, you'll see harness, we'll see fragment. We are going to see fixed list. <clears throat> I don't know what is this. You can explore. <clears throat> so there are many, many things in Pega which need not, you need not understand, but you can explore. No, not worry. So rule HTML section. These are part of section is part of basically layout, right? So it comes in what all comes in layout properties. They'll come all come in HTML. Bottle comes in. So bottle comes in, you know, your activities here, flow, flow action. You can just go and, you know, explore. <clears throat> so all these things are, so that's how the Pega has, you know, class structure of the classes. Okay. <clears throat> okay so let's see what is um, obj so so what we are saying is obj so we're talking about activities so activity is a rule and whenever we create an activity we are actually leveraging rule obj activity system defined rule okay and then we are use whenever we create an activity is coming derived from them so so activity has many methods so where does the methods go whenever we do go to this so whenever we open activity so whenever you whenever you create activity you have to imagine this so when i go to this technical <coughs> and i go here so these are the methods of the activities like property set property opg open so suppose i go here and i click down down arrow you can see all the methods available in activity and if you look at the, my documentation these uh, these methods are classified into different different categories like obj open this basically are trying to you're trying to you know uh, retrieve information from the database or you know store the information from the database or the work object or the your data types so basically you're trying to retrieve or you're just trying to save uh, and or you're going to delete all those kind of operations and there are other operations you know you're trying to do connection to external systems which are your integrated systems okay then you're going to do some parts you're trying to actually manipulate the data so there are very various 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 things and activity is going to be an extensively work on going to work on activities from now till the end and activity is going to be a bread and butter so 
so these are the methods so, so when you see an activity screen you see the steps so steps have defined your sequence of sequence of uh, 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 what do you call it? sequence of things that you're going to do in your activity so that you do your uh, you you get you attain your business logic or business uh, process what you want to attain whatever uh, you know the the business process is talking about then there are different parameters parameters also we saw right suppose you're calling this activity through a screen you can pass the parameter and gets collected here automatically and then later on with that pages and classes are very important so that you can you can refer to any page suppose you are going to query from this page you know you're going to save it back to this page you're going to delete a record from this page so you need to have a reference first this is just a reference then you need to put the data in the page page when you say tb page is this you know imagine this just referring it's a blank page you need to put records you need to tell what it to do what instrument security is very important when we do so we are going to run uh, when we work with soap service rest service and all we are going to work on all this so test case specific is all fine you need not, need not worry about that <clears throat> so this is an activity as such okay i hope by doing obj open you got a nice uh, feel of how the activity works now we are going to go with so we see here only we almost explored three methods which is for a page new property set obj open and now we are going to do something called as obj save so obj open did what it actually took the records from the database and it saved it uh, and it op you opened it and it gave you the it actually told told you to get the correct based on the bank id it gave fetched you that particular record so it is fetching one of the record based on your property you can put multiple you know if you have multiple parameters for you can put multiple parameters also to fetch that particular record and if it doesn't fetch it throws a it throws an exception and then you catch it and then you manipulate it that's what we did now what we are going to do we are going to do something called as obg save okay so how does OB, what we do at obg save so we have a flow right so we have a start flow this i'm talking about the flow we existing we have so which is a flow we have now so let's let's leverage, leverage this flow so let's talk about customer info flow so this is the customer information flow now in this flow what are we doing we are just you know when we run this flow what happens we'll just what are we doing we just entering the information as soon as you submit it says okay customer information input is thanks for your input bye bye that's what it says now where does this information go Shikan, where does the information go so this is my flow so i'm saying this is my customer information screen right i created this flow the start flow end flow this is my assignment that's simple flow right and here what i'm asking is basically your first name last name all those things so Shikan, where does this information get stored Shikan is there No, she can't start there. Sudhakar, where does the information go? So into the connected DB, right? Connected DB, which DB? Here in this case, post grade, post GRE. That and post GRE, anyway, everything will go in DB, na? Come on, Shikan Sudhakar. You are understanding what is my question? See, we created, try to understand my question. See, I create, I'm running this flow. I'm getting first name, last name, age, enter. And this, when I run this flow, I get the screen. Yeah. And I submit the information. It says, thanks for input. Now this flow, you know, uh, we are working in the work layer and it goes and it stays in the database. Every information has to go and save in the database. That is for sure. Now, we also have something on as customers. Sorry, uh, I just wanted to say, I think it saves in the Tesla hyphen data layer, which references the customer table. So, see, when I'm running, see, I'll show you what I'm what I'm trying to ask you. Now, I'm, I'm in this flow, right? Yeah. I created a simple flow. First, first, first flow which we created in our case, we created this flow. And then I, when I'm running this flow, I'm running this flow, right? So, when I'm running this flow, Uh, 
I'm not in this flow. Okay. So I'll give it something different name. I'll get Samir. Just to make sure that you know Samir is Samir there. Let me see. Yeah, I'll just create a new one saying it's somebody could ask Naresh from some other batch. Okay. So so I'm just getting submit. So I'm gonna submit this. Okay. So what did I submit? Naresh. Do you see it here? Let me refresh. Let me refresh this. Do you see Samir Naresh anywhere here? No. Why? It is still in the clipboard. Clipboard? No, I've saved it. Sub submitted. It's gone from the clipboard. Babu, you understood my question? I ran this flow. I submit the information. It says thank you for input. But here in my table, I don't see this. Possible it's still somewhere in the cache uh, table or cache reference. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Murari. So go to our basics now. We we discussed a lot of things in our we discussed for something called as work table, right? We said work layer, we said data layer. See, guys, you are you are forgetting the basics. See what did I say? I said that when I when we this this is let me put you all at mute. See, when I said, when initially when we said, when I said, let me open our. When we, what, when, when we created a replication, we created these layers, data, table, work, right? Our classes we defined here, tables we defined here. I created the customer table and my work is here. So I created my flow here. When I run my flow, when I run my flow, where does it get stored? Which table does it get stored? PC, this is a class. So it'll go ahead and store as PC underscore Tesla underscore Tesla underscore work, right? That data, that table is going to get stored, right? When I save this, it is going to get stored in Tesla, Tesla auto work, PC underscore Tesla auto work, right? And how it is getting stored? As a blob, right? You guys forgot? Yes, yes. Right. See, when I go to my, let me on my database so when I'm so when I'm whatever I'm creating here as a flow it is actually going and storing it here as a blob so that all the case IDs which I create here is going here right are the cases going here no are the course cases going in the storing in the tables no the cases are going here why because in any organization in any project the number of cases are going to be very high the, suppose you're working for an auto ins insurance company in a big organization they'll be you know, in, in daily there'll be 500 cases or 600 cases coming to the system and imagine the number of cases that are going to occur in this layer so the, basically they store in a blob that's how we do uh, pega is optimizing by stay, saving that as a blob and returning as a blob correct so what i'm storing here is actually going to the blob so uh, Okay, so it is being stored in the PYPZ stream column. Absolutely. So don't forget that, please. This is what we started now. That's how we initial discussion all happened, right? I know how it is. You just. That's why I'm talking that many times so that you don't forget. Uh, where is that? So where will get stored? PC underscore Tesla. Where is that? Well, we have already PR. Yeah, I actually go blind when I scroll like this. Yeah, so 
this is our layer hmm? pc underscore tesla so all these things are getting stored right here here again you cannot see this because <clears throat> you cannot see this because you know you are you know you know, everything is coming here right pz pv stream everything is getting stored here as a blob is it not so so see this is all the blob so how do we you know how do we so everything is getting stored as a blob everything is you know like you know, whatever i stored event is a blob now i have to read that blob so how what are the different ways of reading the blob so one way is to use obj browse <coughs> Let me open my paint. So what is happening here? My this start flow. This is my assignment. This is my end flow, right? What I'm doing? I'm doing just you know customer customer information I'm storing. But again, this is work layer. So this is work object. So when it's work object, it's going into my work object table, right? So when it's going to my work object table, then uh, how do I retrieve the information because it's stored in a blob? This concept is clear, guys. Right? So, what are so what did what is this then? This is a table I separately created, right? This table I separately created, but I used by I used you know I just added one field called as customer here. See if you look at the definition data model, I just added one field here. The rest of the field I picked up from the organization layer. So that's why the fields are common. You get me? So, but I created this table specifically, separate table. Okay. So, so what happens when when we run this flow? Everything gets stored in the blob. Everything is you know. So you now, how do we retrieve information? There is various various ways of ways of retrieving information. So I can use something called as you know. I can use OBJ Open. Okay. So when I when I use a use a, a work object, I have something called as OBJ Open by handle. Okay. What is this? I'll tell you. Don't worry now. When I say handle, we need to have. When I say handle, we need to have our primary key. What is the primary key of the table? What is primary key of uh, work table? Pz ins key. Super. Yes. So Pz. Remember this. Huh? So for for opening a record from a work table using this method. This is a method. Okay. This is a method for in certain activity. We need something called as obg open by handle. And for that, we need a primary key. We'll see this case later. Don't worry about now. Now, if I want to just check, you know, just check what I entered, there is another method called as OBJ browse. We'll see this now. So what is OBJ browse? It will ask you the PZ INS key. You have to just give you a reference of PZ INS key and it will show you the records which are submitted. This is also an activity method. Okay, um, and if I use, if I connect this with the report definition, you know what's a report definition, right? Can I see the records? I'm talking about what records? I'm talking about first name, last name that I created. Can I see it? No. Very good. We cannot see that. Okay. What what we can see in report definition? Tell me, Samir. Mm. Suppose I connect a report definition to this table. What all I can fetch? You can fetch the case ID. You can fetch. Uh... Correct. Correct. So whatever is available in that table, you can fetch. Yeah. Right? This you cannot break because it's not broken. Yeah. Now we'll do a chapter sometime later where we'll expose the columns. Once we expose, then you can see. Okay. Once you expose, it will come here. You understand what I'm saying? Talking about exposing, right? Yeah, but you said you know, we are not supposed to expose it because it's going to create performance issues. Yeah, yeah. So Pega has given an option to expose. Uh, yeah. It is not recommended to expose, but some cases you may need, right? Some cases you don't want to, you know, uh, do a lot of things to just get some information. That time you expose. So why I'm telling all this, I'll, I'll tell to the point. I'll come to the point. But did you understand um, what we are talking yeah, well, yeah one question Shiva. Shiva, one question so my question is like you know with respect to say see um, so you so we, we have the option of exposing these particular columns but Pekka right. recommends us not to expose it 
Yeah. Is it because, like you know, uh, if we access the columns directly, uh, I mean, as soon as you expose it, the performance is going to come down, or is it like you know, only if you access those columns will the performance will you see some drop down in the performance? See, performance generally doesn't go down. Performance will mm -hmm. go down if you have huge volume of data. See, if okay. the, when the suppose you for option case one, case one is you do you have no columns exposed, okay? And then you have almost you know many maybe like you know 10,000, 20,000 cases in this database. Okay, a huge number of records, and each blob is very heavy. Okay, okay. and and case one you do you have not you have not exposed any columns. You just kept it to the uh, whatever Pega defined out of the box stuff. Mm -hmm. So Pega will be able to easily manipulate and throw you stuff and uh, capture information, store information through you because it is optimized for that. The moment you expose a column, it has to do an extra work. Not only does it has to break the block, it also has to update that column. Is it not? And so when it has to little do extra work, suppose the uh, the the records are limited. Okay, records are less. Okay, the blob size is less. Then you're good. When the blob size increases, that is when the challenge comes. So we have we have got many cases. You know, uh, in uh, Pega, what we are seeing is many of the scenarios saying that the block size blob size is huge and you know, the performance is getting affected so what do we do so we you know we purge old cases suppose there are closed cases which you don't need in the system you purge it and you keep it in some other database or some other table you can create a table here right you can create a table in your own schema and in that schema in this data schema you can create a table or you can create a database also you can create a new database and you can uh, put a table out there and you can store that information there hmm? so you're purging this you're purging the record, number of records here thereby increasing the performance you're getting what i'm saying yep. so it is yeah so but in some cases if you need to have a column because you know you need to run report definition or there could be some business scenario that you need to you need, need not run at multiple places mm -hmm. and that time you that's why pega has given you the option to do that okay <laughs> Okay, so why I'm telling all this? Let me come to the point. Now, what happens is, suppose I want to you know browse or fetch all this information. You know, that's it's a little bit of because those columns are not exposed. Then I would use OBG open by handle. Then uh, that I need a primary key. You know, then I need to all this. And if I want to do some more manipulation, it gets you know more tough because I have to rely all this. So what I'll do is, so what we do in the in our organization is, as soon as as soon as this flow runs, right? As soon as this flow runs, in between, I'll introduce one more flow. <coughs> and in between, I'll introduce one activity here. Okay, and that is called as a utility. I will put an activity of type. This kind of a job, kind of a job. Thing, okay? It's not a job, but it's just, it doesn't require any manual intervention. So I'll put an activity of type utility. So what I'll do is I'll divert this here and then you know take it take it out here so you know i'll cancel this i'll cancel this route so basically i'm going from here i'm active do calling this activity and going here. so what this activity will do this activity will basically so this is active this activity will basically save in my so i have my db right i have my database i have my customer tables already created right and then I'm going to save this. I'm going to save this activity will save this. Save same info. And the customer table. So what will happen when I run, run this flow? See. When I run this flow, it is not only going into our work table, it is also going to our database. So since I have the same information in my, you guys are there. Since I have the same information in my database, let's see, since I have, now when I run this flow, it goes into the work table, which is not exposed, but I'll run, put an utility. So the same information stored in the database. If it is there in the database, you can, I can use report definition. You know, again, this OBG open. I can use many methods. I can, you can see so that because the columns are available for me. And then I can manipulate asset when needed. You getting me what I'm saying? So this is one way wherein we can work around without compromising the, I mean, without uh, 
uh, hampering the performance of the application and simultaneously we can have um, all the data that is required i mean we can create a separate database right without yeah, exposing so this is, the columns in the correct correct so basically this approach uh, we take it because whenever we design anything na, this approach we take it because you know uh, the same information over here is available here also and then you can use we can understand you know what all things would done because once information gets here i can you know do a lot of manipulations i can do a trigger i can send an email a lot of things i can do because i have the visibility here fully and not only that you know, my you know um, performance is not compromised because i'm not tampering here you get me so that is we that is why we do this okay or you have to use all these methods and then do it make sense you're getting me what i'm saying guys so this right now next time awesome. yes sir i just said this is awesome like uh, you know we have uh, it's a scenario wherein you can have the cake and eat it too because uh, i mean previously in uh, where i was working i mean we had a very huge database and uh, it was getting affected as you said with loss too many records and uh, right right this is a very good scenario a very good solution for that particular problem yeah but there is one more pitfall also samir yeah one more pitfall you know what is here you are actually uh, replicating data of two places okay you are not only doing putting here and putting here something goes redundant data correct something goes wrong something goes at obj this whenever you put here something goes wrong then you will have you know there there should be there should be a scenario should not be a scenario that you are you are trying to you know find the data is uh, failed what you call reduce redundancy gets more right one data at two multiple places so that you have to take care somehow you understand because this is your single source of truth this is a single source of truth right and this becomes your kind of an additional information but make sure that these two are same so we have to uh, use those measures some if some if a or b if the saving of data here goes somewhere wrong you should be alerted and you should be aware of that right So but that can be avoided, right? I mean, if we, if we have this particular mechanism wherein all the data being stored is only through that particular activity, I think we can avoid that scenario. No, no. See, I'll tell you. See, now this is our scenario. This is our case. See, what I'm going to introduce. What I'm going to introduce is now. See, actions. Sorry. We have to do a save as because this is in a different version. We'll go and create an open. so what i'll do now i introduce a new one which is called as utility okay this is kind of a kind of a um, function i mean this is a, this is an activity of type utility which will help us to this will not require any manual intervention this requires a manual intervention right so this utility you know suppose so this utility what is which i'm going to do now what is what is it going to do it's going to save it to my table right it's going to save to my customers table right suppose you know there's some there is some data issue this does not happen then there is a data here a data not there at the table right so that time you just you have to make sure that that does not happen or we have to make some measures you understand what i'm saying right data what is there in work layer should be there in the database layer also okay so this is the utility so we have to work on this utility and what are we doing here we are going to use a method called as obj save so can you guys do one homework for me can you guys work on this obj browse it's very simple hmm? try to work on this obj browse we'll do obj save now we did it obj open obj open by handle we'll see later for your homework is obj browse huh try to see if you can it's very simple you just have to browse you saw obj open right similar obj open is opening one record huh? and obj browse is opening multiple records it's like a select query you guys will do samir uh, babu and all yeah okay fine yeah please murari sir please try that now let's do obj save <clears throat> let me take a stock of the time oh we almost done out so okay so obj save is quite simple so i put a utility here okay so but i need to create an activity so i'll go over technical technical and activity okay so first thing 
so what i'm doing is save cust info in a database okay so i'm saving the customer information you can put a big label but i prefer to put this way so you can go ahead and open okay so what are we going to do we need we need we need to take the information here and store it here right so we need a we need a reference of this table right you get me what i'm saying tesla so let's see cost page okay so i need a information of this table now i'm going to save i need to save this table from information from here so again we'll go to our previous concept when i this is my new flow right so when i'm here what is this what is this page i'm running here right this utility utility this activity i'm creating for what is this activity i'm creating i'm creating for this utility so what does this become primary page right you are there you guys are there yeah, yeah. okay so we'll go to parameter we don't need any parameters we'll go here so we got the reference of this okay and one more thing you need to remember is this is if you go to security there's an activity type this is of type you have to mention utility so we'll cover different types this will cover as utility so we got pages and classes first thing so what we'll do now page new. always do page new so that system creates page if you don't do you know it might it might override the primary page so make sure you can try that sometimes you know it may take the reference of the primary page so when i say primary page you understand right for the page from where it landed so so first of the page now page new then what do you do you have to take the information from here and so this is my this is becomes this is my utility this is my so when i started the flow i put all my customer information here then i call the utility i'm trying to save so i'm i'm here now so i need all the reference of this that is first name last name how do i get primary last time it told right sorry so what i need to do properties so from where to where i need to do a property set i get the values from the primary okay so i need to do a property set in my here also are good so my cust id so here i put primary <coughs> so here what i will do you know i will use py id what is PYD? Sameer? Case ID? Yeah, PYD is case ID. So I will take first, so my first name. So these are all in my table, right? This is all in my customer table. Because use, I use the same name from my organization level. Then what all we have there? First name, last name, age, gender, state, city, zip. This five minutes, huh? then we'll wind up. So, okay. So, so I'm setting. This is my blank page. I'm setting my blank page values with what I entered in my form. You know what I'm talking about, right? I'm talking about this form. When I start the flow, I get a form first name, last name. Once I enter, I come here. Here, I'm trying to save to the database, so I get a reference. I want to know what I entered, so I use primary page. All that information I select, I entered. I get it from primary. So again. So this is my primary when I say primary dot. So my first name should be here. So 
by its last name. Age, gender, state, let's save this so I did page new I did property set what I need to do next see this is property set will only clip put in clipboard I have to save to database so I need to use OBJ save so it will ask me what to save. make sure you point to this page because this page has the information and I will open this then something called as right now when it's a right now if I say OBJ save without right now it will only go into the clipboard I say right now it will come like a commit. It will commit to the database. So I you know check out, save, check in. Simple, right? So save cust to table act. So that is a utility we have created. Now I go to this flow. I just I need to point it to my activity. So I will see I'll go and remove this put a down arrow it will automatically show if I don't see if I if I don't mark this as utility it won't show up there make sure you select this then you know let me see you know. make sense Okay, let's run and see. So we are we are going to enter the information, then it goes to the database, and then it saves it. Same information, right? So, so if you look at the database, suppose let's look at the database. So your cust ID should come as your case ID, and the other information should come from the from the form, and I'll take some information which is not there. Okay. This is a boys now. Maybe I'll use my girlfriend's name doesn't matter right I don't have a girlfriend I'm just joking okay run <clears throat> okay so let's use some girl's name uh, God you guys are there or not yeah, You like girls' names or no? Okay. Well, <laughs> I'm just trying to make you guys active. I think Babu is sleeping, huh? for sure. Babu is very less active nowadays. Not at all. No <laughs> I'm just, I'm just <laughs> pulling your leg. Uh, Sudhakar seems quiet today. Maybe he's multitasking. He's playing, doing something else also. I think. Anyway, because it gets very boring if I only talk. Okay, uh, so let's. So, what are we no, doing? Sir, here? I'm just uh, trying to recollect everything. It seems I'm forgetting everything. <clears throat> oh, that's fine, man. That's all part of our game. Uh, okay, so you understand, you guys understand what I'm doing? So, see, now this is where I am. What the information I'm send, putting here goes to the work object as a blob. Okay, so this our this is where I am, right? Suppose if I you know that uh, where am i right if i click here it shows me it's i'm here is it not now this is a this is a utility so it won't show it'll just go tuck tuck because there is no manual stop here right so whatever information i put here then i'll submit so it says thank you for input okay and then it's place is closed but that utility should have run so let's see if our lady priya is there so we'll go to data model we'll do a refresh always refresh because sometimes you will see oh it's not there because unless and until you refresh it will not otherwise it will show you the old record so you see this our our custom case id is come here pyid and then our priya is also come here okay 
So you can pick up date from there, put it here, put it here, put it here if you want. So that's how you basically, so now this Priya, that record is not only here in the work objects, also in the, in our DB. Okay. So what to do after you do this, after I do the OBJ save, try to do it OBJ browse. You guys will do that, right? If you are not able to get it, tell me. In OBJ browse, you don't have to do any property set. Property set is setting value. In OBJ browse, you just have to fetch. When you fetch, you just have to give. When, when you fetch, you, OBJ browse will fetch everything for you. So when you fetch, you'll understand. In the You have to fetch from the work object. Huh? You have to fetch from here, not from here. I saved Priya here as well as here. Priya, I can see here. I cannot see here. Right? <coughs> so use OBJ browse and search for Priya here because it will break the blob and show you. It will break the blob and show you. That's idea. You're getting my point, guys? What I'm trying to say. Yeah, see, what are the ways to uh, check the work object data? To use OBJ browse, OBJ open by handle, right? You can also use OBJ open, but make sure that you do an OBJ browse for now and see here. And anyway, in this table, you can use OBJ open and see here. Table is not an issue because you can see, you can also use report definition here to fetch the information. Report definition is the recommended approach. Okay, so if I have to give you a choice between OBJ browse and uh, report definition, Pega recommends report definition. So that's why you know all this we do so that we can fetch data. Sounds good, guys. And there was one question which I asked last time. You know, if I want to debug parameter, if I want to debug any parameter, which debugging tool should I use? Did you guys find out? It has to be tracer. How? Where? Okay, if it has to be tracer, then tell me where. Well, no, your answer is correct, but then where? Okay. Samir, Samir said that, right? Yeah, yeah. So you find out, Samir. So. Find out. Okay, yeah. there are many articles on the net. You can check and check and search also. But let's be very specific. I, tracer is the correct answer. But how do I go inside the tracer? Where should I check? That is the point. So two two yeah two homework. One is OBJ browse and another is uh, how to check how to trace parameter. Okay.